Hey fellow world wearers, it's Angry Turtle coming back with yet another build video as I was able to figure out how to make this particular build very interesting. It will definitely not be a build for a beginners as it does require some knowledge about fallout mechanics to utilize it to the maximum potential, but it's definitely one of the coolest I made. And without further ado, let's jump into details. First, let's take a look on the special distribution. That's the heavy gunner build, non-power armor, full health, and with a special twist that you will see in the moment. This is a basic special distribution before applying legendary perks. Those are the legendary perks required for this build. Of course, you don't need every single one max out to start running this build, but if you have them all max out, that definitely helps. If you don't have them all maxed out, what you can drop, like what rats is already good at rank 1 for this build, Funky Dats is already good at, at rank 1 for this build, you would probably need special, in case on this particular build, you can upgrade taking one for the team later, like special is more important. Legendary Luck, Endurance and Intelligence, that should be your priority for upgrade. Other three, secondary. Now the perks, and here you will be able to see the special twist, and I will explain in a second. We do have some explosive weapons and non-explosive weapons, that's why Ordnance Express is obviously from all the ammo types, the explosive kind is the most heavy, then we need that. We have only 12 strength to support all the heavy gunner build, there is not enough strength to support much more, but because this build is kind of a lazy category, we don't really need carry weight perks apart from the Ordnance Express. After that we have Perception with Concentrated Fire as yes, we'll be using VATS in this build and Grenadier to boost our explosions. If you are low enough level that you cannot even max out the legendary perks, but you still want to use this build, by dropping explosive portion of this build you will save 10 special. Ordnance Express can go, Grenadier can go and Demo Expert can go. That will save you 10 special if you want to try this build early on and you don't have enough special yet. Next, under Endurance, we need Servability, that's why Life Giver. Revenant is here, we want those self revives, we'll go over that in a second. Therefore, some other choices are very specific to the fact we want to support Revenant. And that's quite difficult in this game, therefore we're maximizing our effort to avoid instant death. That's our biggest enemy, we want to go into the down state without instant death for that. We have, of course, Fireproof, as explosions have high potential of instantly killing you. Next, we have Ghoulish. This is to reduce only rank 1. This is to reduce your risk of instant death while under influence of rats. And a side like Fissure side and stuff normally increase your chance of instant death, then Ghoulish to counter that, together with Rat Sponge from Legendary Perks. Next, under Charisma, we have Party Boy for our accuracy in VATS. Yes, that's a sweet water special blend in use. It counts as a lazy aid because it's super easy to obtain. You just visit the big teapot and trade some honey for the special blend, and that's easy. Next, we have some Strange in Numbers and Tenderizer. This is to boost our mutations and boost our damage. After that, Intelligence, Demo Expert for our explosives, First Aid. Here, to boost our health regeneration after self-revive, it will be swapped for Pharmacist whenever you want to go into the Nuke Zone. In the Nuke Zone, you will be just popping right away from time to time, boosted by Pharmacist, and that's how you do it without Power Armor. After that, we have Agility, Max Out, we need this AP, we have Action Point for AP Refresh, Ganfu for Auto Swap of the target, White Knight to do not repair our armor all the time, as regular armor do break quite often without this perk. Adrenaline, more damage, and Evasive, more resistance to reduce the risk of instant death again. After that we go for the Luck, Bloody Mess for more damage, Grim Reaper Sprint to support our AP Refresh, Heavy Guns are quite heavy in VATS, therefore we need all type of AP regeneration, class freak, there is a plenty of mutation, we need it. Star genes to keep those mutations and ricochet 
again to reduce the risk of instant death. Like sometimes if an enemy like double tap you, you will instantly die without going into the downstain. Ricochet reduce the chance of being double tap as there is a chance at least one of the bullets will get deflected and there will be no double tap. And this will cover the perks. Now let's go over the mutations. And mutations we are running in here. Adrenal reaction. Yeah, surprise full health build with adrenal reaction, but that's because our health will keep changing from low to high as we are not gonna heal. We're going to rely on self-revive, then our health will fluctuate in full spectrum. Next we have burn bones for agility, eagle eyes for accuracy in VATS, egg head for extra experience, herbivore, double benefits from Sweetwater Special Blend, mainly health mentality for extra special, marsupial for jumping, scaly skin for more resistance, and speed demon for reload speed and move speed. And now the gear. Weapons. Recommended weapon number one will be anti-armor plasma caster, hopefully with vast hit chance, but if you will not be able to get one like that, at least anti-armor. This one is required, that's the best prefix for this build, as it works on full spectrum of health and always, and is super universal, then anti-armor. Alternatively, if you cannot get it, aristocrats or anti-armor gatling gun with vast hit chance works too, not as good. But works, and if you mod it for ultra side 5 mil ammo, it's quite ammo efficient and pack a punch. From the explosive category, of course, two shot grenade launcher, auto grenade launcher, this is a beast. If you can afford one with VATS hit chance, wow, you are set. And now, other great option two shot explosive Gatling gun, very ammo efficient, kills super quickly with this explosive portion of the damage. Uh, there is more weapons that you can use, but those are just some examples from me. Gatling gun, plasma caster. This is mostly what you should be able to get and will work. Armor. Here you will need full set of life saving. From the backpack category, I do recommend armor plated. Although not necessary. If you want to use high capacity, it will be fine too. Whatever you want to use, this one is just recommended. For the chest piece modifications, you want asbestos sliding for most of the time, as you want to avoid dot fire damage that can instantly kill you. And if not this, dance is quite nice to reduce damage from self explosions. Then yeah, either dance or asbestos sliding. Jetpack is not really recommended, unless you want to keep like a second chest piece that you just hot swap it for a jetpack when you need it. All other pieces modify with ultralight and yes, full set of secret service is recommended. Just because secret service offer really high radiation protection and energy protection. Then that's why this is a armor of choice. The third star, the second star, doesn't really matter, just life saving. Now about the eighth category, if you want to carry some psycho buff for boss fights, that's good. You usually want to carry some right away in case you need to enter the nuke zone and you want to carry three to five super stims. No other stims, just those limited quantity. You can carry more, but they're getting heavy and you don't want any weaker type of stim packs because whenever life saving will be triggered, it will use lowest grade of stim pack you have in your inventory. Therefore, you don't want to keep any low grade stim packs, only super ones. Under food and aid category, we'll be actually crafting super easy to get food like corn soup, mute fruit juice and tato juice because those just require to pick up a plant from your camp and cook it. There is no other ingredients and they are super helpful. Plus, sweet water special blend for extra 15 perception for vast accuracy. And now we just eat one of each and we are covered for quite a long time. As you can see, most of those 30 minutes sweet water special blend, full hour. Then there is minimum maintenance. And finally time for some action, for some showcase. Unfortunately, I cannot promise you that you will never die. Sometimes you will be instantly killed. It's not possible to absolutely avoid. The most common scenario is a poison damage. I don't have solution for that. I do have as high poison resistance as I can get, and it's still not enough. But as you can see, damage-wise, you are one-tapping most of the super mutant with a headshot with this great accuracy. Some of them can survive like level 100, especially legendary enemies. But look at that. You don't worry about anything. 
you just go and we don't even have a full damage as we need to get down first. And now as my health will be dropping lower and lower, question will be, will I get one tapped or not? That's the biggest question. Super mutants have this ability. They have automatic weapons and some of them fire fast enough that you can get one tapped without going into the down state. What's not good and it can happen. I'm not gonna lie. That's a biggest downside of this build. It can happen. It will almost always happen if you are fighting poisonous enemies, even with all the poison resistance we do have in here, unfortunately. Okay, they really struggled to kill me, therefore I think I will need to like slow down somewhere and maybe they will be able to finally do a killing blow. So I'm going strong, they cannot kill me. But I don't have any healing during the fight, they should be able to eventually. Come on, okay, maybe I will, I will let them. Even though they have automatic weapons, please no double tap. No double tap. Okay, I'm waiting. Let's see if they double tap me or not. Please ricochet, cover me. Yep, worked. And look at this healing after the fact. I want to show you that. Look at this healing. That's why we have this first aid and super stims. The healing after you get revived is crazy. Therefore, you cannot be killed too quickly would guarantee that your life-saving armor will get out of cooldown before enemies can kill you again, even in a hard fight. Maybe one exception, decryption, they probably can kill you faster than one per once per one and a half minute. That can that can possibly happen. Unless you kill them quickly. If you kill them first, then it will not happen. Or if you carry like a shredder vampire minigun for decryption. You can always figure it out. Or try sneaking. Something will work. But for, more, for, for the normal scenario, as you can see in here, there is like no way they will be able to kill me before 90 seconds pass. Like, I have almost full health, okay? We need to try different enemies, different weapons. Worth to mention here is that Revenant duration is 30 seconds longer than cooldown on the life-saving armor. Therefore, yeah, it's good. It's good. There is no worries. You can almost keep the Revenant all the time if you really want to. And now we are using the very accessible Aristocrats Thunderpipe, what is a Gatling gun, and we're going for the headshots. And as you can see, it's perfect. It's like quite often one bullet, sometimes two for those scorch. Look at that. We're getting rid of them. There is zero rats for us due to all this high rat protection and rat regeneration, plus healing from our ghoulish. You see what's going on? Even with high rats, we're taking only a little bit and then we heal up. And it's perfect. Now, on the flying creatures, unfortunately, there is nothing better than two-shot grenade launcher. If you don't have it, that will be a problem. If you have it, don't forget to target Torzo instead of anything else. And just let it rip. Huh. Even regeneration didn't save the Scourge Beast. It's insane. This gun is insane for flying targets, for any target. Just don't forget to swap for a torso. And now we'll be testing two-shot explosive Gatling gun. That's a beast that we are using on the torso as well. Look at this guy. One shotting, one tapping in the torso. I will show you how good accuracy is. We need another fissure. Look at that. Those scorch even far away. Even far away scorch. The accuracy is crazy. Look at that. Full accuracy that was outside of the range. Oh, look what's going on in here. Are they fighting this Scotch Beast? Oh, that's crazy. Let's let's help them. Two-shot grenade launcher. Come on. Do not, do not interrupt me, Scotch. I'm busy shooting this Scotch Beast. Okay, let's unleash it. Oh, accidental hit on the vertibot. Where's the Scotch Beast? Oh, I killed Scotch Beast too. Okay, they dead. Uh, I will just shoot you up close. I have enough fire resistance. I mean, uh, fireproof. Max out fireproof, I'm on a team, then I'm good, I'm good. In case you want to use like exclusively two shot explosive grenade launcher, you would probably need a dense torso. But apart from that, if you use it outside and with higher range, you don't need. 
So you can see if I shoot close, I take some damage with this setup, but not too much. And since the next patch is not far away, self-explosion damage will be reduced. Then you would not even need a dense torso anymore. That's worth to mention here. Where is he hiding? Oh, I somehow got him with 0% hit chance. Here you go, Vertibot. Double kill. <laughs> wait, wait. He's running. Can I get him? Yep. Look at that. I uh, fired too many. <laughs> Some fireworks show after the fact. Yeah, you can see this build is super fun. It's tanky. It's self-reviving. You don't care about your weight. You don't care about carrying stuff. Oh, one thing I didn't tell you. Uh, super important. Steam packs are not being used when you self-revive yourself. Therefore, they're always here. You always have those free steams. I don't know how this works, but you just need to have them in your inventory. They're not actually being used. Uh, in some scenarios, sometimes I notice I'm even gaining one because number is fluctuating from 3 to 4. Sometimes go down from 4 to 3. Sometimes go up from 3 to 4. I cannot explain how this works, but basically they're not getting consumed. Therefore, you have those steam packs. They're not getting consumed. Your 8 category is nice and clean, so you don't really need anything else. Your food and drink category is not nice and clean. You don't need to scroll over anything. There is no problem. It's not too heavy because you don't have much stuff. The only thing that's heavy is your armor and weapons. That's only heavy categories. Let me know what you think about this build. Your resistance is crazy nice. Let me know, guys. Do you like it? I, I have so much fun making this build. It took me a while. I spent like three days changing perks around until I found this perfect balance when my accidental instant death is reduced to the minimum. It's still happening. Be careful with poisonous enemies. Kill them. Don't let them kill you because they will instantly kill you due to the poison dot that you cannot avoid. Unfortunately, you cannot avoid. Everything else you are not worried about. You will just get back up. They put you down. You get back up with 50% extra damage and basically immortality for another 30 seconds because of the crazy healing from super stims. And that will be it for this build. That's everything I wanted to share. I hope I didn't miss anything. If you still have any questions, you know that I will help you out as much as I can. And now, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.